Yes. Boom. Yes. How's it going, brother? Good, man. How you doing? Doing well, man. Hey, welcome everybody to On the Range podcast. This is the location where we talk everything Warhog Tactical, everything Kelly Defense, and all things American. How's it going today, buddy? Boom. It's going, man. Great day. Uh, Duco got his stitches out today. We are live on three separate platforms. Um, yeah, man. And we're just uh, trying to get this podcast up and rolling and going from there and see we got George Washington on. So always a uh, fan favorite. Good to see you on, pal. Yeah, man. Uh, so how's Duco doing today anyway? He's good, man. He's a little sore. Um, Is he? Yeah. A couple little sensitive spots there. Wasn't uh, too keen on, but you know, we got through it. All the stitches are out. So now we can kind of start opening things up and getting him a little more exercise and getting out and about. And let's start some uh, War Dog Duco adventures, man. Yeah, man. Hey, for all you guys that are watching on Facebook for the first time, watching on YouTube for the first time, go ahead and smash those uh, subscribe buttons, those notification bells. And if uh, you're listening on iTunes at some of our old uh, podcasts, the audio will be for this one on there tomorrow. Go ahead and hit those ratings. Apparently, we need to defeat this algorithm, um, and ratings is a big part of that. It's a it's a killer, man. But uh, with your help, we can get through it. So, so uh, if people haven't tuned in before, why don't you give a little bit of update about Duco and what actually happened, and and after that, we'll talk about the podcast a little bit. Yeah, buddy. So, um, my retired work dog Duco, uh, he basically got diagnosed with osteosarcoma, which is um, bone cancer in his right rear leg. And really the only way that we could uh, save his life or prolong his life, if you want to say, was to actually have that leg amputated. So we had his right rear leg amputated uh, two weeks ago today. Uh, we just got the stitches out. So he goes back down um, Monday for start his rounds of chemo. And yeah, you know, so. Uh, yeah, man, he's was, been, uh, he's been toughing it out and uh, we're all, all proud of he, him and yeah, he's just he's doing a great job yeah he is like absolute beast mode he is driven like nobody's business and now that that you know pain of that right rear leg is gone yeah dude he is um he's rolling so yeah super happy so those of you out there who've never tuned in before um there's a there's a big thing that uh, we enjoy and that's uh, americana uh, we're big fans of that stuff, big fans of uh, things like the hot dog eating contest on the 4th of July. I love that stuff. And another one yeah. is the national dog show. Uh, you know, I never miss it. I know you're a big fan. Um, did you tune in this year? Were you able to make it? Oh, yeah. We caught some glimpses, man. And it was one of those. It's like, come on, guys. You know, what's the yeah. what's the skinny here? But yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm all about it, man. I mean, you talk about some stuffy um cosmopolitan type stuff man I, i'm all about it it's freaking blast uh this year you know they took um the the best in show was a a dog that i really i'll be honest i had never heard of it mm -hmm. never heard of the breed um so i'll go ahead and try to put that up but uh he's a good looking dog you know the, the funny thing about this stuff is um you know they're so they're so serious about it and i can kind of appreciate that a little bit but you know it is what it is. So let me bring, let me bring that up here. You know, it, the, right. the funny thing is, you know, this is the best in show. The funny thing is, is I think we're rolling. Oh, oh yeah. It, Look the, at that. Thing. Yeah. The standard poodle. I, I actually yeah. think that they don't have to cut their hair like that. I think they just grow like that in the wild. Of course they that's do. What, that's what I heard. Yeah. Just yeah. natural, yeah. natural occurring. Yeah, they run around. Yeah, so you had you had that. I just call them the uh, the big poodle that rolled out there beforehand. And then, did you see that shaggy thing that looked like uh, you know, like you're going through the car wash? Those things that dangle down. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I love they, those. They had they had one of those things, man. I'm like, what is this dog? It's it's like I haven't even seen half of these dogs. Yeah. So, so you're you know the first thing I noticed too when I was watching this that all all the dogs this year. Mm -hmm. They look like old, old men. Yeah. Their faces look like old men. Yeah. You know, maybe not so much the, uh, the terrier here, but, or the, well, he's got a, he's got a white snout anyway, so he couldn't tell. Yeah. So they run around, you know, they do it, man. I'm, I'm just down with it. Last year, the two-year-old, uh, bulldog 
mm-hmm. named Thor took the took the win. Yep. So this year, you know, let's go ahead and fast forward this a little bit. This year, the um, the big winner was that, like I said, it wasn't a breed I'd ever really ran into before, um, and he he's pretty cool or she's pretty cool. Uh, her name is Claire. She's the three year old. I guess they call it a deer hound. Deer hound, something, something like that. But anyway, mm. she took best in show. She's a good looking dog. She kind of looks like a greyhound, just with shaggy yeah. hair. But yeah, she ended up taking home the win. But like I said, I love that stuff. Uh, you know, we're big fans of that. You know, the hot dog eating contest always comes to mind. Uh, where Joey Chestnut gets after it. You know, I love that stuff. So. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, it was it was a good time. I always tune in. I always enjoy it. So. Those that are tuning in for the first time, maybe we should give them a little rundown about the show. Um, you know, both of uh, both Rick and I are uh, military veterans. Rick did 29 years. I did seven. Uh, I left to go into uh, law enforcement, but we're lifelong friends. We've stayed in touch ever since. We've known each other for over 30 years. So, you know, I know people are thinking, ah, just another couple of uh, 2A guys and that kind of thing. But it's a little bit different because we really mm-hmm. don't talk much about gunslinging even though mm-hmm. that is our passion training, you know, the oh, next yeah. generation of war fighters and, and uh, protectors, first responders we really don't talk a whole lot about gunslinging. So, no, it's kind of a play on words, right? So I, I kind of alluded to a little bit of uh, like Mac in, in the university of badassery, you mm-hmm. know, it's kind of a, a, you know, play on words. And you think about this, right. And since we brought Mac up, we'll throw that out there, man. We talked about birds. We talked about cars. We mm-hmm. talked about music. I mm-hmm. don't know. Did we talk about guns? I don't think so. I don't think we well, touched. Maybe a little bit of range theatrics and things like that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know, but but as a you know general whole, nope. You know, no. um, heck, when we had Tim Kennedy on, we didn't talk yeah. anything guns. You we know, we talked, talked about SF his stuff. Show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, talked about his cooking stuff. You know, mm-hmm. um, so it's 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 kind of a play on words, and people, oh yeah, on the range, yeah, dude. You know, just here's the thing: all things Americana. You know, and that doesn't mean that we've had all Americans on here either, because we've had some foreign guests as well. That's true. Uh, yeah. You know, and and like I said, it's bringing, um, bringing those different backgrounds and then, you know, just have a conversation, you know, just yeah. chat. And then I think our biggest thing is just trying to get uh, those little tidbits of info out and just pass them on to people. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. especially on the entrepreneur side, you know, side, because that's, kind of both the roads we're going down is, Hey man, what are those tidbits? What am I missing? What can I pass on to somebody else? What can I learn myself? Then hopefully the, uh, the viewer listener, you know, they can be tuned in as well. So, yeah, you know, constantly learning and what's up. Go ahead, buddy. No, I was just saying, you know, constantly learning and really, you know, I think here's the thing. And those that have been kind of listening from the get go, um, they'll know that you're actually the head of this thing. You were the one that when this whole pandemic hit, we were kind of, we'd had some things in the works, um, you know, collab stuff wise and everything shut down. You're like, Hey man, what do you think about doing a podcast? I'm like, what do I know about a podcast? You know, I think I sent you. something. Yeah. Nothing. I think Jocko, you know, had something Mm -hmm. on there. Hey, here's some stuff to buy. Um, And that's, we got, you know, the recorder and stuff like that. But really, I mean, we went from, Man, shanty. It, honestly, I think we did it. What first one was phone calls, and you know we've mm-hmm. done. Um, you know, here we are peaking it, doing live on three separate platforms. That of course you all figured out. We did um, one down there at Pantio at Fernando. You know, on yeah. set. You know, yeah. Um, so yeah, dude, you're you're really the one that's got everything up. I mean, you're the ones that hey, here's the mics, here's the stands, here's all this stuff. So oh, thanks, buddy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that it, but here's the thing. I think it goes to show, especially for the listeners, viewers out there that, man, you just kind of get that direction or you sit there and go, man, I want to do a podcast. You can yeah. do it. it, it oh, yeah. It's easy. Um, you know, and we just keep going and trying to build and get better every day. Cause at the end of the day, if you're not trying to improve your fighting position, yeah, you know, what happens you're when just, the, uh, wasting time. Yeah. That's it, man. When the Indians attack it, at dawn, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, another thing happened this weekend and we had talked about it on one of our shows and that was the, uh, you know, Mike Tyson fight. 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, for those who didn't know, they probably heard that Mike Tyson was going to uh, fight again. It was an exhibition against Roy Jones Jr. Uh, mm-hmm. and something that they had created um, for uh, former athletes, former boxers, that kind of thing called the Legends League. And I have to admit, it was pretty entertaining. Uh, oh, yeah. Really entertaining. I can tell you one thing. I don't know about you, but uh, Mike Tyson looked, he did not Dude. look someone in his 50s. No. He looked no, jacked. It- yeah, and it was funny because did you see kind of the um, I think it was the post fight stuff, you know, or maybe it was the pre, I don't remember. But uh, he's busting Jones's ass, going, "Hey man, you've been out of the game for like three years," and Mike couldn't get his dates right. right. He went one time he was twenty, one time he was fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Mm-hmm. Long story short, he hasn't been in the ring in a while. It's been, and man, it's been a while. Yeah, and he he, he looked, looked like a million there, bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Even though he probably earned, I think he earned up 10, 10 million bucks. Everybody's yeah. going to always go see uh, Iron Mike and tune in. I got to admit, you know, the, the premise, the first thing I thought was this Legends League with former, um, you know, athletes. I'd rather see them do something that wasn't their profession. You know what I mean? See mm-hmm. if they could do something um, different, you know, maybe playing, I don't know, um, tennis or even basketball if you're whatever, that kind of sport. The combat sports is kind of a different. A different deal. I mean, that's really kind of a deal breaker, um, you know. And I think we proved that with the basketball player Nate Robinson. Mm-hmm. Now, Nate Robinson gets out there, and you know he's facing the YouTuber um, Jake Paul, who is the younger brother of uh, Logan Paul, who's a professional boxer. But they're both professionals, mm-hmm. and um, Jake looked fantastic and absolutely put. Nate to sleep. So I guess the point I'm driving home is the, there is no, you know, there's how many true athletes have competed at the highest level in two sports. And it's, it's only a handful, you know, Bo Jackson, of course, comes to mind, Deion Mm -hmm. Sanders at the Mm -hmm. highest level. You know, Mm -hmm. I've heard people say, well, Tim Tebow, no, he didn't make it to the big leagues. Neither did Michael Jordan. Yeah, you know Heisman Trophy winner and one of the greatest basketball players of all time, arguably the best. Uh, he didn't make it to the highest level. He played, uh, you know, D, uh, maybe B ball, maybe B ball. I don't know if he made mm-hmm. A ball. But now, when you're well, talking about the at, combat sports, you're talking about a different animal. Well, that, that's a totally separate beast, man. You know, you right, had because yeah. because Danny Ainge was another one because Danny Ainge played for um, uh, he played for the Celtics and then he played for the Blue Jays. You know, mm-hmm. so okay. yeah, okay. Um, but. It, you know, like you said, the the combat sports, that's a whole whole separate skill set, in my opinion. Um, because here's the thing. You got to be in it to win it to play baseball, to play basketball. It, you know, oh, yeah, yeah you, might, you might bump guys and stuff like that. But to sit there and step into a ring with another man and go, let's go do this. Yeah, and it, I know, you know Jay, um, to my, my understanding is, is he – you know, not like his his uh, his bigger brother, who's a professional boxer, professional. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jake had been in, uh, been fighting three years, had a couple of bouts, but definitely, you know, three years of intensive training and absolutely looked fantastic. But again, you know, it's against Nate Robinson. Nate Robinson, yeah. awesome athlete. Never going to take anything away from that guy. You know, I he won some uh, several dunking contests. You know, I think he might have been the MVP or or won the sixth man award for the NBA. Just unfreaking believable, unbelievable athlete. And we we all know that there's a difference between you know someone who's a good athlete and someone who's a professional athlete. There's a big mm-hmm. big spread. But when you get in the ring with somebody in combat sports, it's a totally different game. And oh, yeah. it just not only it, do these uh, sports trans do not translate with each other. Jake put him to sleep. I mean, it was, it was scary. It, he was out, you know, he, he's a meme. Now, if you go on Twitter and look at all the memes mm-hmm. of, of this guy laying on the mat, brutal, brutal, yeah. unbelievable. So, yeah. So it was funny. Cause, uh, you know, George Washington was talking about, uh, Herschel Walker. Oh yeah. You he's know? another great, great yeah. athlete. You know, yeah. so yeah, he, he did, um, you know, he played with the, uh, the MMA stuff a little bit and then, uh, he was, uh, Olympic bobsledder. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, he played for, he played for uh, George Bulldogs yeah. and he went on to a great, uh, NFL career. Hey, Keith Weatherell's on Hey, Thanks for joining us, Keith. Talk soon, brother. 
And, you know, Her- Herschel Walker, you I mean, that guy is just a physical specimen. He, he was late in oh, life yeah. when he went to that MMA stuff. Mm-hmm. Very late oh, yeah. in life. And I don't know how yeah. hard he worked into it before he actually took a, a major fight. But, oh, dude, it was yeah. scary, man. I t- <laughs> dude, hey, hats off to the guy. Hats off to mm-hmm. the guy for getting in the ring. I, I can't imagine. But uh, here's another thing, too, man. Nobody, nobody that's younger than us is ever going to remember him now for anything other than getting flat out put to sleep. Yeah. And that, you know, I guess that's the risk you take when you get into something like that. I don't know what his payment was, but Hey, yeah, he I, earned it. Hey man, he earned every penny of it. There you go. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, but athletes, you know, true athletes are different people. Now, you know, we could always say the, the mental toughness stuff that, you know, we went through or that especially someone like yourself went through, you know, there's something to be said about that. And we've seen a lot of guys mm-hmm. go into the military who were professional athletes and didn't last a week. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to pure athleticism, they're just built different. They're bigger, yeah. they're stronger, they're faster, you know, just a different but, animal. But see, here's the thing, right? And just from my perspective, you know, I've had the chance to be around a lot of professional, just different teams. Um, and especially on the you know, NFL side, dude, them guys are are pampered for Monsters. lots of better terms. You know, yeah, but like you uh, said, yeah. It, but I'm sitting there, I'm watching, you know, a guy here on the sideline eats his little power bar, and then there's some crony that does whatever on the sideline, gets Gatorade or whatever. And my man takes his trash and sticks it in his pocket. And I'm sitting there going, dude, you can't get up and just walk to the trash can. And, okay. and, and to me, it's just, it's those little simple things. And when you, and I'm not saying all professional sports, because then you take something like, let's use the NHL, for example, mm-hmm. you look at the NHL. I've watched these guys shower, be in suits to leave, to go home. And oh, by the way, as they're driving out, fans are out there and they're signing autographs, you know, mm-hmm. so it's just a different it's a different mindset, you know, just to yeah. sit there and go, yep, I'm going to wear a professional attire because I'm a professional athlete. Boom. Get down my sport, clean up, suits back on to go make a drive home. I mean, it, like I said, to me, that it's just that discipline that really gets over the hump. And then, I mean, you look at the the NHL guys, man, they, number one, you know, physical sport. Oh, yeah. Number two, they're out there. I think they're playing 170 plus games, something like oh, that. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. So it those. I mean, my hats off to those dudes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. You know, another thing too. Uh, you ever coached youth sports? Youth sports. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I don't. I don't think. Dude. I don't think there's a whole lot of fond memories of the kids I coached. <sighs> You know, they have I, their, I, I'm in it for I'm in it for the bling. Well, I'm in it yeah. for the W. And and that was the problem, man. Yeah, don't get me started on the W. <laughs> because in in essence, oh, I got kind of I got kind of forced by the wreck, you know, to sit there and go, hey, either you coach or your kid doesn't have a team. Okay, oh, yeah. I'll coach. So you want to put me in there as the coach? Cool. Yeah. I'm not going to belittle the kids. I'm going to try to teach them skills, you know, mm-hmm. figure out where the power players are, all that other stuff. But like yeah. you said, at the end of the day, I want a freaking W in the column. Roger. And that. I won't say, yeah, I, I won't say I necessarily, you know, chewed them out, but I sure wasn't doing high fives if we lost a game. <laughs> hey guys, you know, circle it up. Where do we go wrong? Yeah. yeah. You know, Johnny, quit yeah. picking your nose and eating it. You know, I'm watching the ball go by you. Yeah. Well, I, you yeah. know, um oh wait, yeah so, and i got another rule everybody's playing mm-hmm. everybody's playing yeah equal equal time yeah equal time yeah, yeah man because the thing is you know you kind of i've seen it where you've got that diamond in the rough right kids kind of rough around the edges doesn't quite have all his skills um all this other stuff but man he gets a little time out there and man when that thing clicks boom it's like all of a sudden he starts becoming your star player and you're like, yeah, where have you been hiding? Yeah. So yeah, you've got to give those kids time. And that's the hard thing is it's a balance, you know? Yeah. yeah. We all want the W. Do you want to put the power players out there? Sure. But it doesn't do any justice to everybody else. So yeah, it, it's a, it's a balancing act. 100%. Um, yeah. Yeah. But the, yeah, the, um, 
I, and I get it. You know, people are a lot of times people have great intentions or trying to help and that kind of stuff. And, mm -hmm. but uh, my thing about that is, is, Hey bro, when they were asking for people to coach and you guys didn't raise your hand, your opinion might be listened to on occasion, but it don't mean anything. Yeah. You could have stepped right into that and put the whistle and the mm -hmm. clipboard in your hand, walked out there and, and helped. So, you know, Oh yeah. Kind of lost it a little bit with me on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I got, I got stiff armed a couple of times and then finally it was just like, yeah, let's do it. You know? Yeah. And then you, you've got mm -hmm. to sit there and, and, um, I remember one year my schedule was just super crazy. And luckily I found, you know, another dad going, Hey dude, I just need you to step in. Here's kind of my calendar. Just I'll lay everything out. Just kind of get him to do this. I mean, I don't care if you get him just to run laps, do something. Um, yeah. So, what about, hey guys, what about, um, especially though, what about you, face, man? Go ahead, buddy. No, I was just saying, what about, what about you? And, uh, did you get stiff armed into it or did you volunteer for it? Uh, I didn't get stiff armed into it, but no one else raised their hands. Okay. And they needed coaches. And, yep. uh, so, Hey, you know, you know, they, they were going to have uh, a couple extra teams or they were going to have very few teams and, hardly have any playing time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, Hey Lambert, thanks. Uh, thanks for joining. looks like he listens to Spotify. I appreciate that pal. But, um, go. Hey guys, if you're, if you're watching on Facebook and you're new to it and, uh, you're tuning in for the first time on live, go ahead and hammer those like buttons, go ahead and subscribe to Warhawk tactical or Kelly defense and make sure you hit those notification bells so you can get, uh, notified whenever, you know, a live event's going to come on. We got some special events coming up. We've been talking about speaking of another thing that's Americana that we absolutely love the army Navy games coming. Ooh. Army <laughs> Navy. Games coming. Yep. Now and, I've and been lucky we... enough. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've been lucky enough. That's the only day of the year that I hope army beats Navy. Mm -hmm. The only time of the year. It's the only time of the year I root against Navy. So i yeah. um, going to have some fun with it. And, you know, the big thing about the Army Navy game is um, it's typically not super exciting football if you're not, you know, invested into who wins. Mm -hmm. But needless to say, you and I are both invested. So we're looking to do something oh. special about that. Um, I'm really, really excited about this one, brother. I don't know about yeah. you. Big time excited. No, it, 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 yeah. So here's the thing, man, right? We've had just a crazy year. It has been just something else. But yeah. here we are kind of rounding this thing out. Army Navy games coming up. And again, for those of you that have been in the service, you know the deal. It's uh, <laughs> that sister service rivalry. I oh, mean, man. think about it. E even overseas in combat, you know, sitting there messing with the Navy guys going, come on, Sally's, you know, or let's go sailors. Get, get your crap together. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. But no, it's it's kind of that one time. Hey, it we're gonna jab at each other. That's just oh, it yeah. is what it is. And yeah. to me, what I love is yes, the game, but I love the signs that come out and just the stupid smashing back and forth. Um, oh man, you know, the memes are great. The memes are great. Well, it, but but from the cadets, oh and yeah, the mid, and the midshipmen, mm -hmm. some of the rubbish that they roll in with. Oh, they oh, get man. After, yeah, they get after they're, man. They're out there smack talking with their signs going, Oh yeah. And I'm like, you guys are awesome. Hey, so, you think uh what do you think happens at the uh the pub after those? With the you know what I'm saying? Well, so here's what I'm You think they get after a little bit? No. You know no? why? No, because Army had a sign a couple of years back that said uh Navy goes to Waffle House sober. <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh now oh, what's dude. up buddy oh, oh that man. is so good yeah that is so good. but it, it's it's those stupid signs like that that to me is what it, it's just that constant oh, jabbing God. um <laughs> that just oh, that sister service rivalry man is awesome that yeah. that is america right there at yeah. its finest well so. you know if 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 my memory serves me right, the last two years, um, if anybody on, on the uh, comment board, you can go ahead and correct me, but I think the last two years was the first time that army went back to back. Um, mm -hmm. unless I'm, I'm misremembering that, but, uh, the one year had a really bad snowstorm. It's just a great, it's just a great thing to watch. You know, 
the yeah, opening a, uh, Star Spangled uh, Banner is just unbelievable. Yeah. Up in up in Philly, you know where. Pff, well, that yeah, time that, the, that's a good point. It's not in Philadelphia this year. They're actually moving it to West Point. Oh, really? I don't know if that's because. Yeah, I don't know if they want to mess with the the um, issues with the COVID uh, for Philadelphia Could, because they've been pretty oh, restrictive. Yeah. You so that I mean? makes perfect sense. It's like, hey, piss off because that's in essence a federal reservation, right? You know what? I think I think you're right. It, yeah. Yeah. So, hey, man, it's federal property. We'll do what we want. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah so, because there's no way they would keep the core cadets or I don't know what the midshipmen are called, just the midshipmen. Yeah. Um, keep them separate. There's no way they could not bring them to the game. No, you've got to have those guys. I mean, that's yeah. what makes the rivalry of that classic uh, game right there, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a great, great event. And, um, you know, I always get a lot of, uh, a lot of texts from my uh, Marine Corps and uh, Navy guys, and we really get after a little bit, but it's a lot of fun. And I, we're, <laughs> man, we're hoping to have some, <laughs> we're hoping to have some pretty good guests. Um, oh, yeah. So I'm sorry, man, I, but we said the Marines, right? And when you just tell them, Hey, what's up there? Department of the Navy. Oh man, oh, yeah. I'm already starting to jab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, the memes that, you know, we, we always get after them a little bit on the Marine Corps uh, birthday and you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I tell you what, yeah. we love those guys. Love all of our first responders in our military veterans and active military, man. Love all those guys. So looking to have yeah. a little bit of fun and, you know, hopefully we can get this uh, going. So some of those guys can watch and maybe we can get some of those guys on, uh, on board, but I know we're definitely going to have some, uh, department of the Navy guys on here. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. We'll definitely yeah, we definitely have that going on. We got to so. have that sister service rivalry. It does no oh. good just to do smashing of Navy from one side. You know, you got to get the jabs going back yeah. and forth. So they got to, they, they do a lot of the uh, run option. Uh, they don't do a whole lot of passing, but they got a, the midshipmen do, do have a, a really, really good running back. Um, I think his name is uh, Nelson Smith. He's mm -hmm. a beast little guy, but uh, man, he, he's got some running going on in him and, and he had a really good game last, last week. So I will see what happens. You know, I, I like watching all the, uh, the academies play all sports. You know, yeah, love it. Those guys get after it. It's not easy to be an athlete in college alone, but to be, you know, an athlete in one of the academies, man, yeah, that's rough. And hats off to those guys. Hats oh off yeah, because they're sitting there, they're they're burning them guys down academically. You oh, know, they've yeah. got all their military stuff they've got to do on the side, and then oh by the way, get out there and practice your sport. But right. you know, I don't know how it is for uh, Annapolis. I know up at West Point, they're required to do sports up there. So that's that's part of their curriculum in there. So they've got to do some type of intramural uh, sports as their package. So, hmm. yeah. 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 But, you know, it takes a lot of dedication and hard work to be any kind of an mm -hmm. NCAA athlete, but to be in the academies, is, it hats off to those guys. But uh, oh, yeah. that's going to be good. So we'll we'll put some more out on that. We have a couple guests next week, so we'll mention that again. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Anyway, so, uh, Rick, the last event that you and I did together uh, for, you know, firearms training, we were actually able to make it over to uh, Missouri or, mm -hmm. yeah, Missouri. And um, uh, technically it was Illinois, but yes, technically it was Illinois, but, you know, uh, St. Louis and uh, proper clothing uh, helped us put that together along with uh, brute force. And and you gave me the invite. Appreciate that. Had a blast. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's uh it's great to see those guys get out there and get after it. Like you said, it's one of our passions. And, um, uh, the fact that we were able to do this, um, because of the COVID and stuff is just an added thing. But what we really like to do is get out there and, and, um, and train these guys, the next generation. And I bring that up because we're going to go ahead and try to start getting out the calendars, uh, for 2021. Uh, it mm -hmm. hasn't been easy. Uh, you know, shot show, you know, canceled on us. Yep. Um, understandably so I, they're trying to have some kind of a virtual thing. I don't know how that's exactly going to work out. It, it's not. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't gotten the invite. I haven't gotten the invite on that. So the only thing know. I got was, um, for shot university, they're introducing a suicide prevention class. Oh, not, not quite sure what's up with that one. Again, mm. virtual type deal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, there's you not know, a whole lot of information coming out on that. Uh, dude, there's nothing. Uh, here's the thing. It's a wash. And uh, for an SSF, that's a lot of money lost, yeah. you know, for those guys. So 
but it, but they've got to take a back look at. I think they've got to do a revamp shot because shot is just it, it's out of control. It is way too big, um, big and especially big. when you know I'm going there trying to have meetings and stuff like that. I, I can't even walk the the uh, show floor. I mean, it is so enormous, and you've got to have your little okay. I got to go to this guy, to this guy, to this guy. I don't really have a chance to see everything else. I mean, don't even forget all the little guys that are down in the basement, right? Trying to get their new products out there and and make a name for themselves. Yeah, It'd be great to go down there and go, hey, what kind of widgets gidgets guys got? Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I love my wife, man, but I got to educate her a little better because she had me one year. Uh, it's some guy who was trying. He had some type of California bullet button contraption. And she thought it was really cool because I was talking to somebody else. She was kind of over there looking, wasn't quite all in tune with the whole California stuff. And she's like, come here, check this out. And I'm like, what do you got? And I listened to the guy spiel. Oh, that's cool. You know, not from California. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, like, babe, you know, yeah. <laughs> time, time's money. You know, yeah. thanks for, for checking it out. But yeah. Um, but I don't know. You know, I, I'd like to see it, number one, tuned down a little bit. Um get some of the ash and trash that just window liquors that are out there rolling their carts, trying to get free swag. Yeah. Uh, if you're there for swag, you're probably, you know, um, not there for the right reasons. Just yeah. Rick's opinion. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's a tough, um, it's a tough, tough event to go to if you're trying to get specific things done on a smaller mm-hmm. scale. You know, if you're going there to meet one person and you're a purchaser for your department or your company, that's one thing. But, um, you know, making those large orders and things like that, it, it is, yeah, it is brutal. I don't brutal. know. Here's the thing. I don't know from the guys I know there, I don't know that anyone's doing any purchases really because pretty much everything's e-commerce nowadays. Right. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's kind of, it's still there because people are bringing out their new products to market and touchy feely in the range days. And we've gone from one range day to 300 range days. I don't even know how many there is now. Yeah. Um, all these little sidebar stuff, you know, I get it, but at the same token, man, I'd say the window liquors for lack of better terms. That's the part that kills me when I'm sitting there kicking them stupid trolleys of dudes, just swag stacked up, taking 20 freaking pens. I'm like, give me a break, yeah. dude. <clears throat> yeah. So, but yeah, but the, uh, the event out at, um, the event out in, uh, the St. Louis area was, uh, was really good. Uh, mm-hmm. seems like, um, you know, people are getting after a little bit. And um, enjoyed it, yeah. and brute force provided some some things, and uh, and proper provided some things. They were able to go ahead and um, you know give uh, outfit the guys with some with some gear, and yeah. uh, it was just it was just a good event. Yeah, and um, really enjoyed it. And you know, proper did a good job on this video. You know, throwing mm-hmm. your name out there and all the good work you did. And these guys, man, they had a blast. Had a yeah. blast. Well, you were out there too, pal, helping out. You yeah, know, and that was the you know a critical part to that, but. And again, you kind of see uh, dark, gloomy. You know, I think we're all bundled up rain jackets. I mean, we, would, we had fair weather. You know, it wasn't the best. Excuse me, which is okay because uh, guys got to get out there and train in, in all environments. But, um, yeah. you know, like I said, the support from proper was, you know, I don't know. I haven't done any other LEO events where, you know, a clothing company has out basically outfitted these dudes. Yeah. So, hey, man, here you go. So, yeah, uh, hats off for that one. Um, and then of course, you know, our friends over at brute force, mm-hmm. they supplied, um, you know, the bags that we used and then, Oh, by the way, they said, Hey man, give them away. I said, Roger that. Yeah. So in classic Warhog fashion to steal something from our Navy brethren, uh, pays <laughs> to be a winner. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's what we did. And it did that you day. Know? It did that day. Yeah. Yep. You know, another thing too is, um, proper was uh, nice enough to go ahead and, Give us a promo code OTR for on the range 20. Um, nice. I think it's good. It's good to the summer. So go ahead and take advantage of that. I know it's, it's a holiday season. So uh, tell your loved ones, that's what you want. They got some great gear, um, the pants and all that. And the, the guys really had a good time. And, um, you know, it was hard. It was hard to keep their attention at times. There's a scene where um, if you're watching on YouTube where the sun came out for a second, I think. Yeah. But um it was hard to keep their attention uh, some of the times because it was it was pretty miserable. But man, hats off to them; they did a freaking great job, and we had I had a blast anyway. It was just yeah. a good time. Well, luckily but, we um, had that little uh, warming shack there, so that worked out mm-hmm. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Hey, I do want to hit one thing real quick, Mark. Yeah, so buddy. going back, going back to uh, old George Washington's comment reference, um, high school and wrestling. So here's the deal, brother. And people know this if you've listened to any uh, other podcast outside of here that I've done. Um, Allie, of course. Yeah. Set, find me, find me a range. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe you know somebody. Um, <laughs> but um, it, here's the thing, George. Right. So I put a lot of my military success on my experience with, uh, you know, especially the high school wrestling stuff. And I've told this story, you know, 20 different times. Um, here's the deal. When I showed up initially, you know, to wrestling practice, all right, I wasn't expecting to be conditioned for two or three weeks or whatever it was, you know, coach basically ran a mini type selection for lack of better terms. He just basically smoked us. And what you would see is guys would start dropping off. So whether he had a magic number he was trying to go to or whatever, I don't know. But it was the fact of going back each day going, well, maybe today's the day we learn moves. Maybe, the you know, especially as a freshman. You could easily sit there and went, yep, yeah, I'm out of this. Nope. But you sit there and hang with it. And, and I think as long as those wrestling programs are done like that, um, that is huge, you know, for a young man kind of – uh, growing up just to give them that internal discipline to, Hey man, keep grinding every day. And hopefully them coaches are doing those, uh, conditioning sessions beforehand. Cause I would run that model exactly like that. I would do, you know, two or three weeks of just smoking these kids to go, Hey, who's in it to win it. Yeah. Um, you know, Mac talks the same thing. I think, um, Jamie, I think he wrestled as well. You know, it pretty much all the wrestlers said kind of the same thing. And it's funny how you kind of see, uh, at least kind of in the special ops community, a lot of wrestlers all kind of chiming the same thing of, hey, just that. Yes, it's a quote unquote team sport, um, but it's it's all individual and you're out there. You know, you've got to have that drive to, hey, make your weight. You've got to sit there and have that drive to show up the next day knowing, hey, I'm just going to get slammed. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Great comment by George. Uh, Brian Gilman, good to see you, buddy, on Facebook. Hey, guys, again. Um, if this is the first time you're tuning in, you can always go to iTunes, Spotify, and go ahead and uh, listen to the audio and uh, get up uh, up to date on the shows. And if you're on the audio podcast, go ahead and uh, hit us that rating. Uh, go ahead and comment and like and all that. But the ratings are the big thing when it comes to the audio. And if you're watching on uh, YouTube Live or Facebook Live, go over to YouTube and hammer those subscribe buttons for Rick and I's page. And uh, also hit the notification bell, leave comments. We love them. Um, you know, it's been a lot of fun putting this thing together, but I got to tell you, I think one of the things that I'm very grateful for this year is uh, being able to spend some time with you on, on the show, Rick, and, um, and all the guys that we've met, you know, uh, mm -hmm. some of the, the guys, even the, the, the ones that were looking to put on the, uh, army Navy game show, man, some of those guys just turned out to be good friends and just, mm -hmm. you know, I knew they were going to be a good people, but some of them are just absolutely amazing. And yeah. man, you, you just know you could reach out to them and, um, and they'll do whatever you need to help out. Just it's a, and we've talked about this before. It's a smaller community, um, that I thought it was going to be, I thought there was going to be a lot of guys like us out there, uh, willing to help and willing to get out there and do different things and, and go to training and drive, you know, hours for free and help them because they're getting something going. And it's just been amazing. It really has been mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you know, really, it's it's kind of that, um, and I won't say every, everybody we have on our veterans and stuff like that, but really that veteran entrepreneur uh, community, man, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, being able to reach out to guys, hey, man, I need some help, or hey, I need to hit your Rolodex. Um, you know, you got any contacts here, there, whatever. That's the, that's the whole key. And that's really, you know, when you look at, to me, Rick's philosophy of life, man, it's just about helping people, right? So especially the 2A community, man, we are so much, we cut our throats like nobody else, where if we just came together collectively, man, we could crush whatever issues, dramas are going on. Yeah. Um, so you just look at it from the business world. Trust me, there's enough work for everybody. There's enough whatever out there. We don't need to sit there and cut each other's throats and everything else. Hey, man, what does it hurt? Mark goes, hey, man, I need X. Yeah, buddy, call this guy. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. And trust me, you know the people that you're going to align with. You're going to know people that's going to, 
you know, screw you down the road. I mean, obviously I'm not going to sit there and get stabbed in the back 300 times. Uh, but you're going to give a guy a benefit of the doubt until he shows you something different. And you take that philosophy with business, with life, whatever, man, it's too easy. So, yeah. Yeah. A lot of good connections. A lot of good connections. Really yeah. enjoyed it. So. One thing I got to say, Mark, you, you're kind of embarrassing me a little bit. You, know, you got your uh, Christmas ambiance. I guess I need to go hang some lights up here, get in the spirit. Yeah, brother. I wish I could take um, credit for that, but I had absolutely nothing to do with it. Uh, my lovely bride did all that. And uh, I'm definitely in the Christmas spirit this year. You know, you could need it um, if if you've been locked down like we have been and, and we're looking forward to it. Um, yeah, man, we got the trees, you know, going and we got some other stuff. You know, I got the little old school. You can't really see it, I don't think. Got the old school Santa Claus, you know, the little plastic deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, found that in a, oh, yeah. a friend of ours bought that for for us and really appreciated that. So now if I can just keep the keep the animals out of it, you know, we'll be all right. So what about your decorating? You been up on the roof this year, put on lights or anything like that? Yeah, I don't no. go on the roof. I, I'll yeah. basically do a, a gutter light hang. Um, <laughs> <laughs> seriously. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, man. I, that's one thing. Here's the thing. I don't mind decorating. I hate the lights. Uh, I'm not going to lie, man. I hate those lights. It is just absolutely um, just a pain, you know, oh, d- sit d- there, <laughs> unstring them, make sure you plug them in beforehand. Any bulbs out. It, it's just like, really? Dude, whoever <laughs> invented the laser projection deal that just puts it on the side of your house is a freaking is my hero. Yep. It's got to be have, someone like Elon Musk came up with that because that's the best thing ever. Yeah, but it's probably not eye safe, so I'm probably blinding myself every time I step. Oh, out dude, I got all night. kinds of dark spots in my vision from trying to get that thing up. But <laughs> I tell you what, it's better than free, than climbing up on that ladder, man. Yeah, you know. So no, I'm, I'm with you, brother. Yeah. Oh man. Um. So you know, a lot of things going on in the news. You know, and the last we haven't really talked about it, but this whole you know, dude, this whole voter fraud thing and all the recounts and stuff, you know, I'd love to hear someone, you know, everybody's comments and your opinion on this, Rick, but I'm just not buying it. I'm not buying it. I, and the reason I say that is unless I'm wrong, I haven't seen anything to show me that there, I can't just have someone say, Oh yeah, we're found. We found voter, voter fraud. Mm-hmm. I, I, I got to see something. Yeah. I've got to see something. So I don't mm-hmm. know. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that because <clears throat> I'll be honest with you, man. Does it really surprise me that people vote the way they do? Not at all. Mm-mm. Absolutely not. No, at but, all. but here, here's the thing, right? So when you look at probably our most cherished thing to do as Americans to vote. Roger that. It, here's the thing. Is there some doubt in people's mind as far as does the system work? 100%. Sure. Yeah. So, so of course you got the pandemic, you know, you got all these silly rules, wear a mask, yada, yada, yada. But then, you know, now we're going to sit there and go, all right, we're going to allow all this mail in, uh, ballot stuff. I know for a fact, I think I got four or five at my house. I didn't ask for them. I didn't request them. So if that happened, you know, so, so there's kind of my thing to go, did something happen? I, I don't know. I don't know. I've just not seen any proof of it. You know, it could have. Well, I know from my end, I can speak going, yep, I got ballots sent to my house. Yeah. Did I request Mm -hmm. them? No. No. The We requested one absentee ballot um, because my son wasn't here. So other other than that, but so if I got it, how many other people or how many other, you know, things went out there and then could I have done voted both ways? Could have sent off my mail-in ballot and then went down actually in person and voted as well. Sure. So, um, but the, the thing is, it, here's my thing. It has to be an in-person deal. My opinion. Yeah. It has to be verified. You are who you are. I go there. I show them my ID. They don't want to see it. Yeah. I show it to them because, you know, that in itself Proof of identification. I am who I say I am. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's wrong with that? 
I don't think there's anything wrong. And, you know, and, and I know a lot of people are saying why, even with this, the, the COVID stuff and all these mm-hmm. other things, we are a Republic. So the States are responsible for those things and mm-hmm. they have to handle it. And, you know, it's not perfect, but, uh, at the same time, it's, um, it's worked out pretty well as being as free as we are. Mm-hmm. And I know it, we, but- we cherish it so much that we don't want anybody infringing on any of it. Um, no. so you know, I, I don't know what the, someone smarter than me is going to come up with something and, um, it, and I hope they do it sooner than later. Here's, here's my thing. I think the, the mail-in ballot as a general across the board has to go away. I think your absentee ballot, you know, for you, U S service members that are serving abroad, 100%, you know, yeah. but why can't you get down to the polling station? So especially, and I can't speak for all 50 states, but I'm pretty sure all 50 have some type of early voting. I know the I state say, of North I Carolina. Would say, I would say so. Yeah. You know, state of North Carolina. I know because we went the second day because the first day it was out of control. Yeah. You know, I drove by a couple of different polling stations. We're talking lines 300 plus meters and there was Zippo for freaking social distancing. I mean, these people yeah. were nut to butt. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we were like, yep, you know, we got some time. No problem. Actually the next day, the place we go to no line walked in super easy. I didn't get my sticker. So I was a little pissed about that. I got a sticker. But, well, I got some cheap big pen. I was like, I don't want no pen. I want my sticker. Yeah, I want a sticker. But yeah, I did find a, uh, I voted in Georgia sticker when I was down there with Duco. Oh, so there you go. I, I felt kind of happy on that one. Did Although I didn't vote one? in yeah. Georgia. No. I, of course I snatched it. Yeah. So, hey, I didn't get no sticker, That's a but, matter. but the point is, for me, for the U.S. voting system, number one, um, ID required. Number two, um, show up in person. Hmm. Yeah. So Pam, Pam had four ballots sent. You know, good for you, Pam. That's being that's America right there. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it, it's it, that. I mean, that. I'm that sure. Right I'm sure there, she was thrilled about that, but. Yeah, but that's that's the point right there. Is is thanks for the comment, Pam. That's Appreciate throwing it. up. That's throwing up red flags going there's an issue with the system yeah you know and the people that sit there and argue and go showing an id when you go to vote is somehow an infringement how is that an infringement it should be encouraged yeah you know i need an id to sit or i need a driver's license to operate this motor vehicle yeah but i can show up to the voting place with nothing Mm -hmm. and go hey i'm willie schmedlap sign me up so so but, I can tell you um, that it hasn't been a great week for politicians. Hasn't been no. a great week at all. Um, you know, there's a few out there. And the if, if anybody had any question, especially myself, if anybody had any question that the character of some, and I'm being very nice here, that some of these politicians is a little bit questionable. I think those doubts are completely out the window. Yeah. You know, I mean, and they'll get in my, my man. Hey, look, all my California uh, brother and sister Americans, man, we love you guys out there. Um, but I got to tell you, I got to tell you, it's got to be tough to basically haven't been opened at all. Mm-hmm. And the restrictions just keep coming and coming and coming. And then you see my man out there, um, you know, having dinner in wine country, probably like a hundred to three hundred dollar a plate per person location, just living it up, no mask at a table. You know, I'd have that if that doesn't prove to you that they are lying, that that person is lying to you, then I don't mm-hmm. know what will. Because yeah. they are, they are flat out lying to you, and you know, it is what it is. But you know, I'm kind of. And I, I heard um, Ross Patterson talk about this today on the the revolution, and he said the same thing. It's kind of hard to have any kind of uh, to feel sorry for somebody when they could have voted these guys out. I know he wasn't up for election this time, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. You could have voted these guys out, and they didn't. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe hey, that's what, what they want. Maybe that's what they want. I don't know, but, but it's not what I can think. Most of us do not want. No, I, I mean we're we're in the same boat. You know, everyone was oh, hooping and hollering. I know when Governor when Governor Cooper locked the state down. Right. 
and kept locking it down and locking it down. And oh, by the way, you lost, you know, more people lost business, went deeper into debt. You know, how much repercussions did you have from that event to stop this quote unquote pandemic that has a 99.92% survival rate? Um, So all that being said, what did the state do? They voted him back in. Yeah. And And I don't think it was close. I was like, guy, come on, man, because it's going to happen all over again. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny because you brought it up, um, reference to 2021 calendar. I haven't put mine out. I, I'm, I'm sitting on oh, because hold of, uh, because of COVID. It, yeah. Cause or I don't because know of what, the po- I don't, politicians reaction to COVID. Exactly. Yeah. I'm stuck at the whim no, I get of, you. Pol- of politicians because here's the problem. I go all over the country. 50 mm-hmm. different rules. Oh yeah. So for example, when I was going to go, um, or actually when I did go out to California, I was going to bring Sandy with me literally days before we're going, what's the governor do? Shutting everything down. Yeah. And she's like, what am I going to do? And yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I said, I got, you know, what I have five plus days of training plus a podcast, you know, up a five eleven. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. You know, and another thing too is, uh, who's the, what's the name of that, uh, the mayor out there, LA? Um, no idea. Hey, you guys in the comment section, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it Steve Adler at Ader? Steve Adler. Anyway, my man is saying that he is going to go to people's homes and shut their electricity and water off if they were having unauthorized amounts of people. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's pushing it a little bit too far. That's pushing a little bit too far. I don't know when he's up for re-election. Be interesting he, to see what happens on that. He doesn't control the power and water. That's a service yeah. I pervade for, I pay for. Oh, I'm down. I believe you. I, I'm right there you with know. you. I I couldn't believe yeah. it. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. I don't know. I, you know, totally. I, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Is it Garcetti? Garcetti? Yeah. Thanks, um, Mr. Chuck. I appreciate that. Uh, Garcetti, I stand corrected, but yeah, man, it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. About fell out of my chair. About fell out of my uh, chair. All these guys, they have literally, they've lost their ever loving minds. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, um, what was it? The, um, just like the mayor of, uh, Nashville, they're, they're going to lynch him. Maybe that's who, it, maybe that's his name. Maybe that's Steve Adler. Maybe he's the, uh, or not Nashville. I'm sorry. Um, uh, uh, Austin. Do you hear about the guy in Austin? No. I think that's where he same kind of deal. Yeah. Um, I can't keep these guys straight. I apologize. Um, but yeah, same kind of deal. You know, he's putting out all these things and then he goes to a wedding or something and mm-hmm. ends up going uh overseas and in a private jet. I'm sure they were wearing masks on the private jet. Mm-hmm. But you know, hey, yeah, you guys you guys really button it down back there at home. Yeah. Button it down. Don't do anything. Unbelievable. Yeah, Garcetti. Yeah, yeah Garcetti. Thanks. Uh thanks, Mr. Chuck Wagon. Yeah. Love that name. Let me put that up so you guys can check out Mr. Chuck Wagon. Thanks for joining in, buddy. Um, yeah, man. Unbelievable. But, so, but of course, you, you got to stir the politic part. And that's like, oh, God, man. Yeah, we don't talk a whole lot of politics here. And you know what? I don't even really consider that. It's just, hey, man. No, you know it's, it, I, it, I think everyone's at a frustration point. You sure. know, it's, it's it, here's the bottom line. You know, whether it's, you know, U.S. politics, which in my opinion is absolutely a joke. Uh, you look at all these people, how they go into office, basically broke and walk out millionaires. Hmm. Yeah. I should sign up. I should sign up for two of those. Cause I could use a couple mm-hmm. bucks. Wonder what you're yeah. doing. Uh, we won't open up Pandora's box on that one. Yeah. You know, and then you've got all your tech giants and Zuckerberg and everybody else that's sitting there basically limiting what I can do on social platforms because you don't like what I do. So in yeah. essence, you're attacking me. And my livelihood and my, my way to earn an income because you don't agree with it. Yeah. You know, uh, that's where I've got the dramas, you know? So it's when you start infringing on my rights, um, that, you know, I start getting aggravated where just like you said, Hey, you know, hit the subscribe button, you know, do the, um, um, you know, the ratings and stuff like that. Cause you're trying to beat an algorithm. You're trying to beat a freaking computer. Well, if the computer set, that you'll never win. It, it doesn't matter what you do. Yeah. So, you know, all these social platforms and everything else, it's social marketing for us is trying to get our names out there, our word. Hey, here's what's going on. 
Um, cause at the end of the day, it's about trying to get, you know, clients and students and, uh, you know, grow our businesses. Cause that's in essence, the American dream to do. Yeah. But shockingly, you know, the people that run marketing, IE big tech, dude, they've got you, you know, how can, how can Zuckerberg go in front of Congress and not know what his own company's doing? You, sir, are a liar. Yeah. You know, there's no, there's no way. You know that you don't know what your company's doing so i personally would have said hey you're in contempt stuck on some silver bracelets and say we're going for a ride but that's just yeah. me um yeah it hasn't been a so. hasn't been a good week it hasn't been a good year really for politicians you know um it's just i don't think anybody's immune to that freaking stench that you get when you walk into uh the halls of uh politica you know what i'm saying i just don't think anybody's immune to it um but hey, uh, thanks, Allie, for letting us know that. Yeah, uh, Adler is uh, the mayor of Austin. Um, yeah. Thanks for everybody tuning in. Um, you know, but hey, it is what it is. I guess this is what we're working through, and you know, working. It, it it's all power plays, brother. It's mm -hmm. all power plays. Oh yeah, it, it, it's it, that's the American way, baby. Yeah, that's what we're in. Yeah. You know, hey, yeah, it's America, man. Mary. I tell you what, those guys like having us around if something starts to get a little hairy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. The one yeah, was around it, then. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. It, you know, it, it's funny because you look at all these cats, right? And, and I love, you know, when they start getting on their, you know, anti-gun stuff. Oh, we need to ban this. We need to ban that. Okay, cool. Hey, take your arm detail. <laughs> tell, tell them to go pitch their freaking blasters in the drink. Yeah. Oh, you're not going to do that. <laughs> so you want it, but you don't want it where everyone else can have it. Absolutely. Um, and that's, that's the hypocritical part of this whole thing. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, U S politics, U S power plays, U S whatever. Hey man, don't, it, do you have to infringe on others? Nope. Because I've got this magic book and Oh, by the way, you can see it's boom right there. U S constitution behind my, Oh yeah. American flag. Oh yeah. You know? And if you look in there, that one that says number two, so the second most thing that our founding fathers put, and they put in this nowhere else in any other uh, piece of that document, shall not be infringed. Hmm. Mm. Shocking. But, um, yeah. you know, I don't really know where the, the lost in translation is in that one. But uh, Well, they don't like it. No. They don't like it. No, so because, because, again, you know, that's the checks and balance. Yeah. from the citizens to the government. When you look at our founding fathers, and you'll hear me harp this time and time again, I'm a big scholar as far as history goes, go to England. Hmm. You want to sit there and go, why did these guys do what they did? Spend some time in the United Kingdom. Yeah. 20% VAT tax across the board. Hmm. Yeah. Taxation without representation, boom, right there in your face. Um, you want to see a uh, so, defunded uh, police department or federal police departments? Go to Somalia. Tell me how that, how that is in there. <laughs> Give me a report yeah. back. Yeah. Anyway, guys, go ahead and hit the subscribe buttons, the like buttons, send us comments. I appreciate everybody in the comment bar today. Hey, man, oh, I yeah. had a lot of fun doing this live show, and we're going to start pumping these bad boys out. Uh, the yeah. uh, the software we're working with now uh, I, is just been great. Yeah. And, and here's the great. thing. Yeah. And, and here's your you know, <clears throat> here's the thing for the uh, the viewers and obviously for the uh, listeners when it goes live on the listening side. I think there's going to be some benefit to doing the live because we're kind of throwing around some different ideas. Uh, may we do a live with our guest? Maybe. Um, maybe oh, does yeah. that give you a chance? Maybe does that give you a chance to potentially, you know, hit the guest up with some questions? Maybe. Absolutely. Will you know who the guest is? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. You know, um, you know another good thing, too, <clears throat> is... Uh, you keep commenting and being a friend of the show. We have several of them that we have in mind. You uh, shoot us something on, in, on uh, social media and we might even let you call in to a guest that you like and uh, be a part of the show. That would be freaking awesome. Um, yeah. A lot of good things we're going to be able to do. We're having a blast doing it, having a blast uh, meeting all you guys. Uh, I think we're going to do another, uh, possibly another uh, comms check. I think this is our comm check <clears throat> six for anybody who doesn't know what our comms check is. It's pretty much when uh, Rick and I just take the show by ourselves. Uh, then we go out there with our uh, episodes with guests 
and uh, bring a wide variety of guests. We've had a, a lot of fun, a lot of entrepreneurs. Some of them, I'd say most of them were military. Some of them weren't. But uh, if you guys have any uh, guests, Marcus, uh, ideas. Yeah, Marcus wasn't. Um, Fernando wasn't. CJ, uh, great guy. Yep, CJ. What a great show. Great, great yeah. show. Yeah. 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 You know, so that's the whole thing, man. I mean, look at the the mixed bag of guests that we've had. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's just been, it, it's been great, you know, yeah. so. But yeah. These com checks are fun. We talk about all kinds of things. We talk about movies, talk about childhood toys and how all the toys now <laughs> suck. And all the ones we have bring, are awesome. Like the bring pet back rock. The pet rock. Yep. Yeah. And then you if you notice, right. So oh, I got to get my finger straight. So boom. If you guys oh, yeah. notice. Okay. Yeah. So my Van Halen, my Van Halen two album went up. There. Oh, yeah. Yes. Album. Classic. It is, actual, it is actually vinyl. vinyl. Uh, oh yeah. It may, it may get swapped out. Um, oh, pardon uh -oh. me. I got to go to boom. I'm going to go to full what screen are, so we can see this. You guys are listening what, what, to the what we got? audio. You need to go to the video and check I it still, out. I still got boom, you know, Look at that $5.99 sale for my, huh? Is that still got the plastic on it? Oh yeah. I mean, Dude, I that can thing's get to my gotta be worth, it's gotta be worth $7 by now. Well, probably. I mean, I can get to my <laughs> albums cause, cause I, I cut the, uh, the edge there so I could get oh, in there, yeah. but yeah. Oh so. yeah. Dude. Yeah, man. yeah, man. RIP Eddie Van Halen, man. Big, dude. big, uh, big part that, of my that life. That guy, man. that guy. Yeah. I mean, I, that's what we grew up on. Right. Was Van oh, Halen. Oh man. Big um, part of my life. And, yeah, and the thing, to see that. here's the thing, man. I I could never figure out what was Eddie doing to play the way that he played, oh, because man. he was smart, dude. He had mastered out these techniques, so he'd be playing, you know, out on stage, whoop, 180 my back, so you can't see him. Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sitting there going, "Damn, dude!" You and know, then all of a sudden, talking right. about rock and roll, man. We had a a big event that was canceled this year. The stadium tour for Motley Crue well, after their last, I, whoa, whoa. Hey, I saw their farewell tour, <laughs> uh, but this one got canceled. So this is their, at least their second farewell tour, but it got canceled. Four amazing bands. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Warhawk Tactical was going to come up to the Midwest. We were going to go get after it. Um, I think they rescheduled it for uh, this summer coming up. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that'll work out because I tell you right now, uh, there will be, there will be, a live show outside of the stadium for oh, the Motley Crue show. Guaranteed. Think, think there won't be. Oh yeah. oh yeah. 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 I'm already, I've already got that in the works. Yeah. I already got that in the works. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was, I was very, very disappointed next. That was going to be a good, good show, man. We missed mm -hmm. out on that. Supposedly it's rescheduled. Um, you know, who knows, who knows, but we're, we're going to be there. We're going yeah. to be there and have a live show. And again, mm -hmm. guys, if you uh, if you have any suggestions for guests that we ought to reach out to, let us know. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some guys reaching out. We're going to have a guest next week, and I think we're going to do that live if we can. And then uh, we'll probably do another comms check next week too. So yeah, yeah, man. So well, glad to hear Duco um, is uh, home and doing doing good today. Um, glad to hear that. I know everybody's yeah, calling for him. Yeah, a little sore. He had a couple couple little sensitive spots there. You know, wasn't too keen on getting the uh the stitches out. But yeah, dude, he yeah. is uh he's a monster man. So he's a warrior, man. Yeah. I mean he's that a warrior. You, you talk about athletes, that dog, yeah. he is definitely an athlete. Yeah, so um yeah. it, you know, silly thing, like this morning, he was his ball went under the couch. So my man's got no right rear leg. So with his left rear planted, right front planted, uses that left paw to scoop that ball out and i'm sitting there going yeah. dude look at this athleticism right here 12 year old dutch shepherd uh you know special operations dog has basically lived a very hard life uh during his military career and boom here he is at the house missing a leg because of cancer yeah. and uh figures out let me hold my steady and get my ball yeah. it's like yeah rock on dude. good for him so man. Yeah. Good for him. I hope the little guys are enjoying having him around. I know you got some other four legged friends. Um, oh yeah. Well, they'll be, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they'll yeah. now, you know, he can get back and actually start chasing them guys around and probably give them a run yeah. for their money. So yeah. But yeah. Yeah. All right, but guys, yeah. again, thanks for YouTube. Um, uh, listeners and watchers and the uh, Facebook uh, watchers, man, 
glad to have you aboard and we're going to keep doing this. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for everybody who made your comments. Uh, Keith, Mr. Chuck, Ali, um, you know, I, I know I'm going to miss some people here, but really appreciate you guys being on there. And, uh, you know what, Rick, let's do this again. Always a pleasure, buddy. And, you know, uh, it, pal. yeah, man, it's going to be all a right, good pal. time. So thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, be safe out there. All you uh, first responders and all you military guys out there getting after it and, and doing all that you do for us, man. Really appreciate it. We love you guys. Um, you know, not just the ones we have in our family. We, you know, we're so proud of them, first yeah. responders and, uh, and military guys, but, uh, we love you guys be safe out there and we're praying for you to get home safe. And, uh, I know you got to do it for us out there on the, uh, uh, during the holidays. So really appreciate it. Really appreciate yeah. it guys. You got it, buddy. God bless America. Right, see you, pal. All right. All God right. bless America. See you, Rick. Bye, right, bye.